Hi guys, so well, I'm Robin. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to this new video. Now, you'll remember we had Spencer or Specs in our last video, which really was looking at hair loss and if it would work for you. Now, I know that we had loads of comments from you guys about this and I, I wanted you back in because I thought, let's now talk about hair transplant clinics and really what you need to know. Because I know that just from even me doing some research around hair loss, there is so much there and there are so many clinics. Um, so in your experience of hair loss and, and having hair transplants yourself, what do the guys watching at home need to know? Okay, well, when anybody gets into looking into hair transplants, there's just a, it's a minefield. It's a real minefield. There are so many different clinics all claiming to be the best, but it's an important part of the research process that you see that for yourself. It's all in good me telling you who to go to and, and you know, but it's, it, what is vital in this hair transplant process is educating yourself. Mm -hmm. And as we touched on last time I was here, that it's really important that anybody that wants to get a hair transplant spends a minimum, a minimum of a year, mm. if not two, really you know, pounding this out mm -hmm. and really taking their time and doing their due diligence mm -hmm. to find not only a surgeon, but a surgeon that's right for them. There's some fantastic, really reliable, unbiased resources mm -hmm. out there. There's a couple of great forums, uh, the Bold Truth Talk, yeah. um, Hair Loss Experiences, a Belly Capelli, which is an Italian forum, but they're, within the, their um, area are countless patients mm. sharing real, legitimate experiences that you, researching this, can gain experience from. I think it's really important that after time in this space researching, that you will, a patient will home in on a few surgeons that they like the look of, whether that's because of mm -hmm. the cost, because of the, of, uh, pro, uh, the location, um, but it's really important, I feel, to meet with a minimum of three clinics wow, okay. in person. Mm -hmm. Don't just rely on the online consultation service. You know, we live in an age now where you can Skype, you can FaceTime. You can easily get a one-to-one -one consultation in person yeah. with a doctor. So you don't physically have to be in the US or Ideally, or Ideally, yeah, because yeah. then that doctor can physically examine your donor supply. He yeah. can physically examine. When, and sorry, when you say donor supply, you mean the hair that it's yeah. going to be taken from. Okay. Indeed. Or the, and the physician can draw on you exactly where that hairline is yeah. going to be. And, you know, get a consultation with one of those surgeons that you feel more inclined yeah. to. It's a very bespoke, personal process, a hair transplant. And it's important that you are not necessarily told where to go, but you find out for yourself mm. where you want to go. I, I think talking about their research and resources, which I will link absolutely all of them and I should say if any of you guys are watching and you have your favorite places to go for information let us know in the comments this is all about I suppose sharing information and experiences um, and the, the whole consultation in person thing I find this interesting because a lot of us online will be seduced by uh, these sort of I suppose international or sort of foreign clinics where you know in the last video you spoke about uh, going across you get these package deals it's not so easy to I suppose go into somewhere say it's in Turkey and to see three different clinics. Like, does location play a factor in here, transplant clinics? It shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, location uh, and money should not play a factor in you deciding which surgeon you want to go to. The reality of the situation is, of course, it's going to. But I think what um, the viewers really need mm. to understand is that we are dealing with a social media epidemic and everybody can is claiming to be or enticing people in mm. to and claiming to be, like I said, the, the leading clinic. Mm. And it's important that the um, people researching scratch the surface on those Instagram adverts and yeah. the Facebook adverts. Mm. And they, um, get, they gain an understanding of how legitimate um, those clinics actually mm -hmm. are and it's very easy to do you know there's with the search functions to, to enable you to to see how legitimate and genuine and how long those clinics have been practicing mm -hmm. and the database of potential before and after pet pictures and they um, should be able to supply all of this to you indeed but they should be able to find yeah. them themselves but what's really important as well is and it's a real problem that um, leading clinics are dealing with currently is that their pictures are being plagiarized right i found my picture of my surgery 
on a clinic in Turkey. Wow. Now, I've never been to Turkey. No. You know? So, and I'm just one example, but they will use notorious, famous clinics work, like the infamous Wayne Rooney, yes. who had his, supposedly he's had his surgery done at countless different yeah. clinics, all claiming to have done Wayne Rooney, when the harsh reality is it's been done at the Harley Street Hair Clinic mm -hmm. in London. Unfortunately, with hair transplantation, you have to really bide your time. Mm. And I can't stress that enough. Speaking from a patient who's had 13 hair transplants mm. Mm. and been through the process countless times myself, mm. if you are going to embark on this process, then fantastic, you know, if you really feel it's right for you. But it's so important and what my message is, and I'm a strong believer in why I do what I do from a patient advocacy point of view, is to educate the patient and make sure they make the right mm. decision. And quite often, I, I suppose, we live in this social media world, you are watching on YouTube. It's uh, We are sort of, again, seduced and missold things by, uh, be it sponsored adverts on Facebook or reviews. Like, reviews can be sort of fudged, can't they? So, Very like, much so. how do we know if something is an honest review? How do we know if that you know, picture is from that clinic? Where can people go for this? I think the forums are a great sounding board, the legitimate caring mm -hmm. forums, and you'll link hopefully yeah, to a course. number of them. Yeah. I think that's a really good starting point to get a control on the reality of what's true and what's not. Or they can ask that question mm. in a community, in an environment that they can trust. Yeah. But also I think it's important that if uh, an individual's uh, um, homing in on a particular clinic and they've got questions, that they ask to meet with patients. They ask to meet with patients and no clinic that is worth its soul mm. shouldn't be able to provide you four or five actual patients yeah. in your area, relatively speaking, to speak to and go and have yeah. a coffee with and ask some questions about how they find their experience, look at the results mm. and, and, and get a really good understanding of how that patient was dealt with as well by that yeah. clinic, you know, pre-op, post-op. Mm. So there's, there's ways and means, yeah. it's just how much that patient wants to dedicate to the research process and how important it is to them. Yeah. Unfortunately, Robin, I, you know, I see it all the time where mm. you can lay it out for people how to do the research, but it's time consuming. You're going to take it or not? Uh, yeah. you know, honestly, they, the majority do, but some don't. No. I think that's the, that's the important thing there, to have these discussions, to see kind of what's happening, lean on people like Spencer who have got sort of years of experience of, of good transplants and maybe stuff that's maybe not going so well. And also from what you've seen from other guys, I, th I think that's important. Having the confidence to ask these questions, to share your experiences is so invaluable. And I know that I find this fascinating. I mean, for me, my hair is thick and full at the moment, but it's certainly something that I do consider. So this is super helpful. So thank you very much again for coming on. No worries, thanks for um, having me. Thank you. I would say the first video we did will be linked in the cards up there, so do check it out. That's the kind of things that you should be thinking about before you go for a hair transplant. And also I am gonna ask you again to come back in. I feel like this could be a sort of mini series. So if that video has gone up, I will also link that one. But thank you again. If you're new to my channel, you've not yet pressed subscribe, then please do press subscribe right now. The button is just there. There will also be more video suggestions down there. Stay with me and watch them. Head to the solutions pages for hair loss, more articles by Spencer, and loads more about hair loss and thinning right there. And then all those links to the videos up there. But I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.